This is a Generation 5. It has a Pulsar rolling wrench pump on it. This is a Generation 1. It has the Amazon slash eBay cheapo pump on it. Both are extremely reliable. The Gen 5 has 12 volt DC going to the rear. The Gen 1 and the Gen 4 do not. But an easy way to tell, turn your key on and see the tail light comes on. Well, right now this bike's not running, so it's not producing any AC current. So that's DC current. So there is a wire under there we can tap into. We turn the Gen 1 on, tail light does not come on. So that means there's no wire to tap into back here. The wire we want is a keyed on 12 volt DC. But if you don't have a mad dog and you don't know if your power is going to the back or not, or something's been changed, or you don't know what generation you have, just turn the key on and see what happens. Tail light comes on. That means I've got DC keyed on 12 volt coming to the rear. So we can use those wires under the seat to put a fuel pump on this one. This is a generation four. It is extremely unreliable since I put this, the Makuni vacuum pump is turned into a nightmare. We just don't ride it enough. There is no DC power going to the rear of this bike. I'm not gonna show you how to get into that, but you're gonna take a black wire from up here. You're gonna run it down. Here it is coming down, tap into a black wire and I've got it sitting right here. And that's my 12 volt DC. The ground is easy to find somewhere on the frame. So you're gonna have to do that mod if you have a Gen 1 or 4. If you have a Gen 5, you'll find that solid black wire right in here somewhere. You can tap into it right there. I'm using the Made in China Carboli gasoline pump, 2 to 3.5 PSI. Important to get that 2 to 3.5 PSI one. It won't overfill your float bowl. You can see the inlet and outlet is 516, so that's that large size. So you'll see these all over. They come in different gallons per hour and PSI. There's a four to seven PSI, four to seven. We want that, that little one, 28 gallons per hour, two to 3.5 PSI. That's our one right here. It comes with the pump and then it comes with this filter. So if you're gonna use the filter, you just thread it right in here. If you don't wanna use the filter, you can leave it off. You can go to Ace Hardware and you can get some of these adapters that turn into fuel hose nipples. These adapters are 1 8 NPT, that's national pipe thread or national pipe taper. That's the kind that actually get littler as they get to the end so it self tightens and that'll thread in there. The reason I don't really bother with them is because this is not the hard end to connect. This goes to the fuel tank. The flow goes that way. This end does not unthread. I wish it did. I could put something like this on there. My problems will be solved. But that end is pressed in. Your mad dog has this fuel pump on it. The issue we're going to run into is fuel line size. The vacuum fuel pumps have what I call the big lines. They go into a carburetor that has the smaller lines. And that's probably the biggest issue is going between those. Further complicated, you're gonna get even bigger lines. These things come in really large. But usually, I can get this line that goes from the tank to fit onto this. Getting these bigger lines to fit the carburetor is the issue. So the bigger line runs from your tank to your fuel pump. This is just vacuum, it doesn't matter. Then fuel is sent from the pump up to the carburetor. I like to use the fuel filters that step down the line from big to small. You can see the step down here. I really like these kind of fuel filters because you can use either size hose on them to reduce your fuel line width makes life easier. That way I can transition from the large line of the fuel pump to the small line on the carburetor. This is the Makuni fuel pump sitting lower than the fuel level mod. It's still a garbage mod, still doesn't work worth the crap. So I have a little short fuel line coming from the tank to here. But typically on your mad dogs, you would have the fuel pump underneath the seat tray right here. And that's nice. You can actually get that fuel line from your fuel tank to fit on your fuel pump because we're going to mount it right here. So no new line necessary. You'll use a line from the tank right into the fuel pump. You'll end up having to cut some of it off actually. Then the line that feeds the carburetor is plenty long enough. It'll be coming from the carburetor up to underneath your seat tray and that can go on the other end. So you really won't need fuel line if you can make your fuel line fit and it takes some stretching. Now, since I have this mod done like this, I'm gonna take this fuel line that goes all the way to the carburetor and I'm gonna run this to the tank and then I'll run this other end of this into the fuel pump. So still not wasting any fuel line. You will just disconnect your original fuel line from the vacuum pump up here. Just set it off to the side. You won't have to worry about fuel leaking out. In this case, I'm gonna have fuel leaking out. So I'm gonna take this line and put onto the tank. So I'm gonna get this line accessible. Fuel's not gonna leak out too fast. That vacuum pump won't really allow it. I've disconnected it from the carburetor. I'll slide it on down. Get that thing ready to put in the tank. If my fuel line is long enough, I like to cut it off where it was attached so I have a nice clean connection. There's the fuel coming out. We're gonna put the new line on. 
And we're gonna raise this high enough that the fuel won't leak out. We'll just set it up here somewhere. We've removed the line going from the fuel tank to the vacuum pump. We've removed the line going from the carburetor to the vacuum pump. We have the carburetor line and we have the fuel tank line right here. We have one more line on that vacuum pump, the vacuum line. It's gonna go into your intake manifold right over here. Pull that off. Get rid of it all together. Put that in the trash. That vacuum intake port has to be capped off and it must be tight. The slightest air leak will make this thing run like crap. This has to be really tight. To cap off that line, you can use these little vacuum caps. They sell at AutoZone. You can also just take your existing line going into the vacuum port, run a bolt in it. That'll work. Tighten that bolt in there so there's no air leaks. If you have a stock Mad Dog, you're going to run into this right here. You're going to have a line coming up from the vacuum. It's going to go to the vacuum fuel pump, but it's also going to tee off and go somewhere on the carburetor. So in this case, I just left the line here and then I capped it off here where it goes to that vacuum fuel pump. Same method, just cap it off. You do not want air getting in here. You may find it like this. You can just cap that off. That's fine. Cap off everything. Not even have those lines like this one has. You can do that option. You may not have that if you have a 50. You may have no vacuum line going to the carburetor. And this would be the side the vacuum line would go into. And you can see this 50 has nothing on it. But the important thing is, is that if you have that stock manifold, when that line comes off, follow that line. It doesn't just go to the vacuum pump that wires off and it goes somewhere else. If we cap off this line here and leave that one open, we're still sucking air into the intake manifold. So you want to either cap it off right there or ensure you cap off that line going to the vacuum pump. You can't have any air getting in this line. I went with the vacuum port cap off cap. Well, even though it's a good fit, I'm still going to put a little zip tie on there and tighten that thing down like crazy. I don't want any air leaks in there. And I pull it tight with those pliers. That is actually one of the number one causes of vacuum pumps not working right is this line is too loose. You shouldn't be able to spin that freely by hand. National pipe taper type threads are not supposed to leak but I found they do so I put some kind of sealer on here you can use Teflon tape that'll work I think the main reason it leaks is because I can't tighten this tight enough I don't trust that plastic's gonna hold so I don't tighten it as tight as I probably should but you will need a big one inch wrench or some channel locks not many people have a one inch wrench Oh, they make this so big. Snug it up on there. I'm going to mount the pump on this little bar right here with that. The tray can be on for this or off. Doesn't matter. I'm going to mount it right there. I want to mount it to a grounding surface. This is a good ground, so I just have to run the one wire to hot, and I can just ground it to here. So you'll need a little 6 millimeter bolt out of your bolt box, and I wouldn't trust this two or three threads in there to hold this, so I'm going to put a nut on the bottom of it, a locking nut. This is also going to be my ground. So I'm going to take that black wire with the loop on it, and I'm going to run it in there. And I'll clean the routing of these wires up later. So I did the same thing on the outlet side of the fuel pump. Remember, the fuel pump's directional. Flows this way. And I've clamped that one on. This hose goes to... I'm using the filter for the step down and then into the carburetor. So we're all set from the tank to the carburetor. We just have to wire it now. We've already got the ground on, just one wire to connect. Look at almost any of my videos about anything electrical and you're gonna figure out how to find this black wire. It's in almost all of them. So I'm not gonna get into that, but make sure your key's off because that's a keyed on hot wire. It has to be keyed on. That's when you want your fuel pump to work, when that key turns on, not when it's running but when just the key's on and when it's running. So it'll be always on, never off. But it's important because your bike's not running when you turn the key on. You want it to get that fuel into the carburetor so this thing starts right up. Makes them super reliable. I'm just gonna use a butt connector and connect these. All right, we're all connected up. Fuel going in, fuel going out, positive, negative. What more do you need? And most importantly, your vacuum is capped off. I'll won't bore you with zip tying all my lines and everything and tucking those away. But prepare to be amazed. We'll turn the key on. There it goes. Watch that. Look at that fuel. Look at that fuel. So quick. So nice. And it'll keep running. It sounds weird. You're thinking, oh, something's wrong. It's staying running. It runs to maintain a head pressure to keep the fuel up here. It's not going through right now because the fuel is stopped. So nothing's going through until it needs it. When the demand happens over here, it will let fuel out. 
but it's always going to run to keep no air on this side of the pump here. We might have spent almost an hour starting this last time I started it with that vacuum pump. It literally took all day. We were so pissed off afterwards we didn't even ride. It took so long getting it started. Used a whole can of hot start. Ended up just pouring gas in the carburetor. But uh, with the electric pump, let's see. This thing hasn't ran in about three weeks. Oh yeah, starts right up. How nice is that? 